This is the Business Maker Show, heard here and seen online at thebusinessmakers.com. And it's guest time on the show. And for those of you watching at thebusinessmakers.com, obviously we're not in a studio this morning and we're not in an office. We're at the headquarters of VentureTech, and I'm with the founder and CEO of VentureTech and the founder of America in Recovery, Larry Keast. Larry, welcome to the Business Maker Show. Thanks, Russ. Why don't we start with you telling us about VentureTech? Well, I started it in my garage 30 years ago, and it's really a good business these days. It was really just the first 25 years that were the hardest. Okay. So we uh, got into the power swivel business. I started okay. as a consulting engineer, but we got into the power swivel business and slowly um, became actually a world force in power swivels. It's a niche, like any entrepreneur, find a niche and fill it. And I liked it because I'm a car nut and it's got diesel engines and it's got hydraulic pumps with high pressure and it's got remote pneumatic controls and a bunch of gee whiz stuff and I didn't think this niche had been overdeveloped. And it hadn't. And so looking back on it, I really look smart. You know, it's a nice business, but let me tell you, it didn't look that way looking forward. <laughs> All right. Now, before we go any further, for those in our audience who don't know what a power swivel is, inform them. Well, a power swivel is a device that hangs up in the derrick. You know one of those yellow chunks that, that you see up, up high that's maybe moving up and down slowly? And, right. And it in rotates the, the drill pipe. the derrick of an oil well we're talking that's about. That's right. That's right. It's for, it's for drilling or well servicing, that is working on old wells, oil and gas wells. Okay. And it has drill pipe hanging on the bottom of it, and it rotates the drill pipe in the well. Okay. A pretty important part of the uh, whole oil well drilling process, right? Heart of the matter. Okay, that's real cool. That's kind of a, a major step to take if, if from a business that you started in your garage. And I don't think your garage was quite this big, was it? It was a two-car garage <laughs> with a shed on the side that, All I, right. that I built. But uh, no, that's right. It was quite a step to take. And I don't really fit the classic uh, MBA entrepreneur, you know. Right. I never wrote a business plan. And, and uh, you know, they, they, if, if I really had an MBA, I don't know if I'd have done this. Okay. But, I've, uh, I've, I've learned to take risk, and, and um, hopefully it's an educated risk. And, and, but you are uh, an engineer. You have an engineering, mechanical engineering degree, correct? That's right. Okay. That's so, me. so you were headed in this direction big time, and you had a couple of jobs along the way, but ultimately you decided, hey, I'm going to take a risk and go out and do it on my own. Yeah, I'm an engineer, but I'm an inventor. I'm a creative guy, and I'm a businessman, as it turns out, and I'm sort of an MBA by default, I guess. And and I'm not suggesting you do it like me, but, uh, but it's, a, it's a nice story of American entrepreneurship these days. Okay. And this is a company you started 30 years ago now, and you've, you've stayed at the helm the whole way, grown it, and kept it private. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Just me and my wife. I'm still sleeping with the bookkeeper. All right. All right. Great. Now, along the way in this uh, oil exploration, exploration business, I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs, right? There have been a lot of ups and downs. This is the oil field. This is Houston, Texas. This is uh, the, the, the oil capital, so to speak. But everywhere there is an oil field, from Pennsylvania to California, right. uh, worldwide, and our business is very worldwide. It's up and down. Right. That's just the way it is. Now, since this is such a, a top-of-the-line news story these days, are your power swivels used offshore as well? They are used offshore, but for the well servicing part of the business, which is the small end of the range, the big... BP uh, disaster is, is a very major uh, multi-billion dollar effort right. and only four or five companies in the world can mount such an effort and, and we're not related to that. Our biggest machine is 250 tons and the smallest one you'd use on something like that is probably 500 tons. Okay, okay, I get the picture. All right, now Larry, you, I have to be honest, you got on our radar because not only have you started and operated a very successful business over a long period of time, but you've also sort of taken this whole entrepreneurship thing to a new level with this program that you have called America in Recovery. Tell us about America in Recovery. I've got a long background in support groups and, and helping other people. And, and so back, um, gee whiz, I don't know, 15 years ago, I hired a guy named John Jordan. And, and he was from a, a drug and alcohol abuse program that I was a parent group leader in. And John was a recovering addict and a, and a counselor. And he had a, an oil field background, and turns out he worked on the kinds of rigs that use our equipment. And, 
And so I ended up hiring him. And he was a very effective leader in our shop for maybe, I don't know, seven years, something like that. And, and it was his idea to start hiring kids from the program. These are under 18 years old who are just sort of ne'er-do-well kids. And, and the idea was uh, put them out here and, and uh, put them in, in the company of a real working man and, 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 and show them what sweat is about and maybe um, inspiring them the idea that a college education might be useful for them. And, and so that worked pretty well. And, and after a, a year or so, we started hiring machinists, mechanics, that's real cool. We, we love to hear stories like this where people use entrepreneurship way beyond just the success of creating jobs but helping society. Now, it, it seems to sort of go against conventional wisdom, Larry, for you to be hiring people out of alcohol and drug rehabilitation programs. I mean, it seems like that might be a risk. That's true. It does go against conventional wisdom, and we hire people out of prisons, too, that are labeled as not hireable by the typical business in the, co in the country. Also, old folks, maybe they're over 55 and, okay, they're not being discriminated against, but they can't find a job. Right. Our oldest employee is our lead CAD designer, and he's 81. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So wait a minute. You, you've got older people, uh, people that are coming out of prison, uh, people with uh, alcohol and addiction problems. Does that cover all of them? We actually also have a, um, a website that is for people that are our disabled people. Oh, okay. Handicapped. Wow. Now, I, I'm, I quickly must tell you that we have identified those as a group that needs support of right. small business offering jobs, but we don't have any experience with them. Okay. It started working out so well for us yeah. because turnover went down and productivity went up and gee, people liked working together more. And, you know, it wasn't always that I could even enjoy walking through my own shop. And still, I didn't really always feel comfortable walking in front of some of the people that we were hiring. Well, after we started doing this, it just changed in the next year or two. Uh, people that are working a program of honesty and integrity, and we give them a second chance in a supportive workplace, they come in here and, and uh, they're enjoying life and they're proud to be here. They're thankful to have the opportunity and they rub off on all the rest of us. That's real interesting. So you're telling me that, that you sort of felt like an uplift in the culture here when you started hiring what most people call the unemployable? That's right. It started being a, a nicer place for all of us to work. And, and then the people coming out of prison, uh, of course, there's a lot of drugs related to that. But even, even when they're not, if, they're, they're, if you don't have a place to have them go to work, then they're going to be going into a U-turn oh, sure. back into the big house, sure. and you and I are going to be picking up the tab, and we're not helping them. It's not a productive use of our taxpayers' dollars. Sure. We're just having to keep them off the street. Sure. We love to see entrepreneurship working this way, but, but let's sort of fill in the gaps a little bit. We keep talking about you hiring them here at Venture Tech, but I think your program is encouraging a much broader utilization of hiring the unemployable. Do I have that right? That's right. After, after two or three years of success here, I felt so good about it, I had to ask myself, well, how could we possibly do something for all of America's small businesses? Could I somehow find a medium to convince uh, America's small business CEOs to do the same thing that, that we are? I mean, what would happen to our country if we did that? Would we be able to improve productivity? Would we reduce uh, turnover? Would we help small business with more profitability like it has to us? Nobody's stealing stuff anymore. We're cutting our costs. Things are just better. So I had the idea of starting a website. Okay. And that is americainrecovery.org. And it is the umbrella website that hosts four free hiring websites. All you have to do is click on americainrecovery.org, and it'll give you a place to click up any one of these four websites. If that's for your particular classification, your background, where right. you, that rough background that you came from, right. then you can go there and you can create a free account. Now a small business owner or his hiring authority anywhere in the country can also create a free account and, and log on and go shopping for an employee that he might want to give a second chance to. Wow. Let's imagine we have a, a small or medium-sized business owner that's tuned in and is hearing the story about America in recovery and thinking, boy, that is real cool. Let's be real clear. What do they need to do to start learning about and perhaps participating in 
a, a similar program? Well, it's it's very simple. You just you just go right to AmericaInRecovery.org, and then you click on whichever one of the buttons for the website that you choose for the background that you, that you're interested in. If you're a small business owner and you want to hire people that are that are coming out of uh, our prisons, then that is no U-turns. I named it that because. I couldn't spell recidivism. Okay. All right. That's good. No U-turns, meaning you're stopping the U-turn for the prisoner to go back to prison. That's right. Can okay. you imagine how much we might reduce oh. our government overhead oh. if we didn't have to hold up all these people and not help them either? It'd be huge. Okay. What it seems like you do in America in recovery, you bring them into the, into the mainstream with responsibility and teach them how to be a productive citizen from there on and therefore not having to rely on welfare. Well, that's the hoped for result. We, you know, the most we can, more we can reduce welfare, the better off we all are. And, and there's no money required. I mean, if you want to donate, we have a place you can donate. Okay. But our, our overhead is, is very low. So VentureTech, with our manufacturing uh, company, is holding up the limited overhead. And then the idea is, is we use any money else that comes in exclusively for publicity. Okay. We don't have any grant writers. We also specifically will not accept any government money or any money from any organization that receives government money. Okay. We are good. out to show that small business can make a difference in this country without government money. Well, Larry, I really appreciate you sharing your story with us about Venture Tech, and I really appreciate you about having the initiative to start America in Recovery. That is real cool. Thank you. You bet. That's Larry Keyes, founder and CEO of VentureTech and founder of America in Recovery. And you're listening to The Business Maker Show, heard here and seen online at thebusinessmakers.com.